uh, Manuel Hurtado. I work for uh, Coachbase, a solution engineer. I'm based in Madrid. We are covering Spain and Portugal. So it's a pleasure to be here with, with you guys in, here in this Tech in Porto conference. Thanks to Jamia who, who are already invited us. So a uh, normal presentation, let's go to the agenda. Um, what we're, we are going to see this, this content today. Um, very short Coachbase introduction very short Kafka introduction, how do they interact, okay? And then my plan is to spend most of the time in trying to show you some demos in different scenarios. So I need all your attention, okay? Uh, first one, first, first question to you. Regarding Coachbase, how many of you already know Coachbase? Hands up. Most of you, okay. And how many of you are using in production? Still a lot. I know you may fact they have a lot of experience with us. We are working with them some, some months ago, very successfully. So what is Coachbase? Coachbase basically, as you can see, is um, uh, it's a NoSQL database. It's a document database. It's a digital platform uh, for the digital economy, in most in, in a more marketing uh, kind of words. And basically, we, we provide two products, server, Coachbase server, which is the, 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 the database. We are a distributed database, NoSQL, uh, key value, et cetera. You, you ha we'll have more detail in a moment. And Coachbase Mobile. Coachbase Mobile is a, a kind of uh, a small database executed in the mobile device, which synchronizes with the server, okay? And we are an open source company. We have a community edition, enterprise edition, um, very easy to start with. You can just download and start playing. I encourage you to do that. We have a lot of customers, and we are in, in the, in the lower panel. You can see here the kind of technology involved here with Coachbase. We are a document database, so we, we used to work with JSON documents, okay? We can also work with key value, so you, you can also store binary values, including images, uh, PDF files, or whatever. Limit is 20 megs per document. Um, we have a very interesting technology we call Nickel. Nickel is a SQL implementation for JSON. Okay, so good news is for many people coming from the relational world, they already know SQL. It's very easy for them to, to, to start with Coachbase. Okay? Uh, then we have um, a powerful index uh, engine. As any other database, if you, you, are, you want fast queries, you need indexing. Okay? We have replication, we are this distributed database. We replicate at two levels, at the cluster level and at the data center level, okay? And then we have uh, Coachbase Mobile, as, as I told, just for, for mobile devices synchronizing uh, with a central database. And in the last releases, you can see some interesting features like searching capabilities. Are you familiar with um, Elasticsearch, for example? Probably yes, everybody. Similar uh, feature. And we are in investing also in, in analytics. You will see some nice news in the, in the next months around that. So um, there are other, other database. This is the, the, the only <laughs> marketing slide. Uh, why are people using Coachbase instead of other uh, in the market? So some of the reasons are stated here. You can see a memory first architecture. So we have a caching layer included in the architecture. Uh, this layer comes from main catch -D, okay? And uh, it has a strong implication in performance because we can uh, have very good performance both in heavy write scenarios and heavy read, okay? Because all the interaction is primary with memory, okay? Uh, we have um, the ability of scalability in several ways, uh, multidimensional, so we can spread the load and differentiate between data, queries, and index and split its, its layer in, in a separate way. For example, more powerful servers for indexing, okay? That can be done. We have Nickel. Nickel is very, very useful for, especially for developers. They like that. We have very easy technology for um, putting the, the cluster in different data centers at the same time, okay? In a, in, and synchronize in both ways. So you can build um, active-passive and active-active scenarios very easily. And we have the mobile framework. The mobile is, let's see, unique uh, in, in terms of, of, of NoSQL provider 
including uh, mobile technology, okay? And easy way to, to, to synchronize. You can see Coachbase in uh, several use cases. You, here you have a few. For example, um, user profiles. If you work with, if, with Apple, you, we are storing millions of, of user profiles of several catalogs of, of Apple. You can see, you can use uh, session storage in, in, the, in the database. You can use entitlement management, advertising, um, operational dashboarding. So you can use, for example, machine learning and they take the output to the, to the operational in Coachbase and, and draw the results. A strong use cases in catalog. Uh, many retailers are using Coachbase for that. Uh, Yumia has uh, several uh, interesting projects around that model. We have um, large retailers like, like Tesco in UK. Metadata, so for example, content management is a typical use case. Imagine um, you, can, you can just choose a typical content management project. You can separate the binary content and the metadata. Typically, the metadata goes to Coachbase. Okay? Then several use cases around mobile, mobility, and uh, IoT. Also, we have several IoT scenarios because of very good performance in, in, in the writing, uh, heavy writing scenarios also. So, what about Kafka? Same question for you. Um, how many of you already know Kafka? Okay, mm, more than 50%. And how many of you running in production? Not too much. Well, so what, what is Kafka? Here you have the answer. Kafka is a, a basically distributed partitioned replicated log service. It's a message um, <coughs> infrastructure, publish and subscriber kind of, of uh, broker. So what, what, is, what is the magic? The magic is uh, they, they build around the uh, transaction log. So basically they, they write the, the messages at the end of the, of, the, of the log files and read sequentially. So that's very, very fast for, um, for concurrent access and for give the, the maximum performance. It was developed in the beginning at LinkedIn, and they, free the source, they make it open source at uh, 211, okay? Now it's very, very popular. You can see it in large customers like LinkedIn or, or Netflix, and also a lot of, of small customers. It's very, very easy to, to start to work with. So the architecture of Kafka basically is like this. You have a um, typical public subscribe model, so in the middle you have the Kafka cluster with several brokers, you can scale the, the server layer uh, adding brokers in its own, in its own uh, infrastructure. So for, each bro uh, for, for a Kafka cluster, you typically define several topics. A topic uh, has some kind of functional meaning. So you, you can define different topics for different uh, functional uh, tasks. On, right, on the left side, you have the producers. So what is the producer? The producer is basically the component injecting data to, to topics, right into Kafka. Okay. And on the right side, the consumer. The consumer are components reading data. Okay. At the right side, you can, you can work with something they call uh, consumer groups. So you can easily um, escalate at the consumer side. So you, you don't have a single consumer for a large topic, but you can spread in a, in a lot of, of, of consumer processes. Okay with this consumer group idea. And on the bottom, you have Zookeeper. Zookeeper basically acts as a, a cluster coordinator, okay? So he takes control of all of the components in the, in the st structure, okay? So um, what's the, the goal for that kind of platform? Uh, the goal is build some kind of architecture like this in, in your company. So basically, you have a central hub for sharing messaging uh, coming from different systems, maybe uh, databases, maybe web applications, maybe log systems, okay? And uh, making some processing, maybe using Spark, machine learning, whatever cool technology, and probably sending uh, output to, to data warehouse, BI, Hadoop, or whatever, okay? So uh, what's the problem with this? The problem is when you work with consumer and producers, basically each, each producer implies coding. You have to code. You have to code uh, how to write your data into Kafka. And the same for the consumer. You have to write some code to read and do whatever. Okay, so that's kind of mm, um, not very funny task. So what did um, Confluent for, for solving this? 
they create something they call Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect, uh, basically they publish a lot of connectors with different uh, systems like databases, uh, logging systems, etc. So um, it's very, very easy to begin to work with uh, such kind of systems without coding. Okay, so in this talk, we are talking about the Coachbase connector for Kafka Connect. Okay. This is the, the in particular, the Coachbase connector, uh, we have two possibilities. We, have to, we can use Coachbase as a source of, of the events. So kind of, if you write in, in Coachbase, you can take some, some kind of, of, of trigger okay, and write to, to Kafka. And you can also use Coachbase as sync. Sync means uh, the consumer side. So, sorry, the, the, yes, the consumer side. So you read from Kafka and write to Coachbase. Okay, without coding, that's the, the, the benefit. So, um, last thing to, to, for you to consider before the, the demo, from the Coachbase side, there is something we call DCP, data, Database Change Protocol. This is the, the low-level protocol for um, interacting in, the, in, in all the nodes and communicating changes. We, we call the changes mutations. The mutations can be a creation of new data, an update, deletion, or um, also expiration of data. Okay? So we are using this internally for inter-cluster replication. So when you write to Coachbase, there is a replica copy okay, um, launched by this uh, DCP protocol. Also for indexing, when you have an index and you write the new data, you have to update the index. Okay? XDShare is the, the data center replication, use the same technology, and then some connectors like this. So, uh, what are the, use, the typical use cases with, with Coachbase and Kafka? Basically, we, we talk about them. Coachbase as the master database. So if you're the master database and the, ch and the data changes, probably you want to, to propagate to other systems. Okay, so you typically sniff with Kafka, write to a, to a topic, and then process, do whatever. Okay? Uh, another example are um, triggers or event hand handling. For example, expirations. I remember uh, recently from a real customer, an e-commerce customer. So they, they store the, the, the session, the user session, and they use expiration. So imagine you are you are buying. You, you have your your basket with some products, but you, you didn't buy. You didn't check out, and and then the, exp the expiration happens. So probably in that case, you want from a business point of view, you want to take care of that customer, communicate with him. Hey, guy, what, what's what, what? I see you, you are trying to, to buy in, in our uh, system. What, what was the problem? Can we help you? That kind of, of scenario with handling aspirations. And uh, of course, um, there are many um, ETL scenarios, extract, transform, and load, which in, imply moving data around different systems. So Kafka is in the middle to, to take care of the, of the changes, okay? both having Coachbase as a source or target. So, enough talk, let's show some, some code, some, some demo. The first demo is about a basic scenario, just uh, using Coachbase as source of events. So we are going to launch the, the, the connector, connect to a, um, a bucket, bucket is a database in Coachbase, and then write all, all to, the, to the topic. Then we will use a, a basic consume consumer, uh, sorry, uh, console cons consumer, which is a basic uh, consumer for Kafka. You basically connect to a topic and write to the standard output all the content. Okay, it's very basic. Okay, so let's let's look at the at the demo. So basically, I have mm, uh, started SoKeeper. SoKeeper, remember, is the cluster manager. Okay, I have started a. Uh, Kafka server. This is a very sim simple uh, environment. This is not a workload demo, just functional. So I have a one node Kafka node, uh, Kafka cluster, and one node of uh, Coachbase. For this demo, I will use the, the, the last version of, of Coachbase. Maybe you have seen this already. It's the 5.0. Is it still in, in beta? Will be GA in the, in, after the summer, but it's very nice, and I, I, want, I want to show you. I hope you, you, you like it. So also for monitoring, I'm using a, 
I'm using uh, GMX, so to reset the windows, okay. So this is the, I have three Java processes, the Visual VM, the Kafka server, and the Zookeeper, okay? I'm, I'm connecting to the Kafka server, okay? And to the mbins. So at the beginning, you can see, this is an empty Kafka um, cluster. So basically, if you navigate to the topic metrics, the, Everything is empty. There are no topics. Okay, so first demo is about um, creating a topic with a, with a particular bucket. We are using the bucket a travel sample. Travel sample is a um, f um, a travel database, including flights, airlines, hotels, that kind of things. Okay, routes between air airports. So uh, let's move. Um, in order to, to run the, the adapter, I'm, going to, to, I'm, I'm not going to show all the details because we have no time, but um, it's not very, you, you only have to, to start the, in, in the, the connector, in, in this case in, in uh, standalone mode, not, not replicated to a cluster, and just uh, configure what is, what is coach base and which bucket to, to connect, okay? So that can be done, I have this ready. Okay. So, um, if we come back to the monitoring of, of, of Kafka, it takes some time to initialize, and connect to a zookeeper, uh, start the, the topic, but after it's very fast, okay? The, the initialization, the startup time is not very good, it's like several seconds, but once it's in, in, initiated, it's very fast. So, okay, now it's working. We have a topic, new topic, it's airline basic, okay? In this topic, we have this number of messages, 31,000, which is the number of documents here. What happened here? With the, with the, um, the connector, the first time you, you start, basically it copy all the, all the data to the topic. You can change it. You, you can uh, start from a certain point in time, but for default, by default, they copy all the data. Okay, so we have all the data in the topic. Now, next step is consume. Okay, with the Kafka consumer. So, what we are going to see is uh, basically take a look here at the monitoring. We have in the bytes in. Okay, we have uh, a lot of, of, of data in the, in the topic, but bytes out, it's empty. No, no consumers yet, okay? Let's start the, um, the consumer. This one. Okay, I have this, this file with all the data. So this is the right one. So uh, we have no time to see, but <laughs> if you believe me, uh, in the Bytes out, okay, now you can see we have this, this console have read all the, all the content from the topic, okay, and write it down to the console, to the standard output. So basically what you see here, each line is, a, is a, a message in the queue, okay, so you have a metadata around that, probably it's too, okay. Metadata is not very funny to, to, to to see, but at the end, you have things like content here, 
Okay? Let me show you. This content is a binary. In fact, it's base64 six, base encoded. So if you come to, to a browser, for example, and, and use a decoder, I, I'm pasting here the binary content. And if you decode here, this is a, a document in JSON. Okay? So this is the, the airline. This is one airline. Uh, sorry, one route. This corresponds to this object. Let me show you this one. The key is a route between two airports. Let me show you like this. OK, so this is the JSON document we are seeing. So um, important to notice, this is real time. So now it's uh, sniffing. So if I write a new document, I will see it in the, in the console. Let's, let's do that. How can I write documents to Coachbase? Well, it's very easy because you can use nickel. You can use SQL for that. So look at here, insert into bucket, key value, the key and the value, okay? That's my name. So insert, okay, here you have the, the value, okay? Uh, equally, here you can see the encoded uh, value, which corresponds to my, my name, okay? So, well, it's the same for uh, if you update. Let's do an update for this. Okay, in this case, you have the new value, which is Luis. And to finish, let's do a, a delete. So this last step, OK. Uh, look at this. Uh, in the, in the event field, in the first case, was an insert. We have a mutation. The second was an update. We have a mutation. The last one was a deletion. OK, so you can see different uh, kind of, of, of events. You can also see expiration. Not in this demo, but it's also another kind of, of event. So um, this is the, the basic demo around um, with a basic console consumer. Let's move to the next one, OK? Next one, well, first of all, I'm going to uh, finish this one. OK, next demo is about uh, using Coachbase in both ways, as a producer and as a consumer. So at the, the producer side, we have already seen, it's very easy. Now the consumer side, which we call the sync connector, okay? Now we have to basically start another uh, connector, which is another pro process, Java process, which will take the, all the topic content and write it down to code base, to a different bucket. This bucket is this one. I have created already before the demo is receiver, and look at here, it's empty, okay? It's an empty bucket. In Codebase, a bucket is a database. So typically you work for different projects in different buckets. We have no the notion of collections as other databases. We have a single bucket. So you, in a single bucket, you can put a different kind of, of documents, okay? So let's write it down to the receiver with the sync connector. This one. Okay. I'll, I used to, to send all my logs to other files. Okay. So, um, what we want to see is the following. Let's look at the statistics at the receiver. So we can see how the, the new items are coming into the, to the bucket. And let's look also to the uh, topic here. Let's look at the, okay, bytes out per second. Well, 
it's very fast because there are only a, only 30,000 items. It's, very, it's not a lot of, of content. So you can see only a small peak here. But at the end, what do you have? You have here that receiver bucket has been populated with the content of the topic. Okay, let's, look, let's take a look at the, at the content. For example, this R line. Okay, so mm, if you see, the R line is not the same structure as the original one. You have here the content already encoded, base64, okay? Which is not very mm, uh, cool. It's difficult from here to, uh, to extract value from the data. Okay, but wh what is the good point here? The good point is, we didn't write any code. This is the, just by using the connector. Okay? So, no questions? Everybody is still alive? Okay. So, next, next step. I'm quite running out of time. Let's move faster. Okay, next step is adding some, some amount of code, not too much, and improving this, this last uh, impression of, of the test. So, we are, we are going to include filtering and structure. Filtering, uh, well, filtering is key in any distributed system, in any stream system like this. Typically, when you, when you build a, a streaming system, you have noise, okay? So one of the key parts of, of, of your design is to get rid of that noise as soon as you can. The best is in the producer side. Okay, this is the best. Otherwise, you will get all the noise around all the layers, and th that's very bad for your performance. So we are, in this case, we are going to do the, the same, but only with a, a specific kind of objects. Not all the, all the objects, but only the R lines, okay? And uh, we are adding con uh, structure to the data. So who in the room want, wants to see code? Everybody, I hope. <laughs> it's time to see some code, okay? Okay, um, not, not very <laughs> exciting code, really. <laughs> anyway, uh, just three, three, this is Java, okay? You can use several languages with uh, Kafka, in particular with the Kafka connector for Coachbase, you are using Java, okay? So for this demo, just three, three small files to, to, to build. This one is not, nothing related with Coachbase, it's a Kafka connector, okay? This is a, to, to just to define a structure in the data. In particular, an R line. I don't want to see the, the base64 encoded content, but a, an R line object, okay? Then, um, then there is a piece of, of code which is responsible to, of making the conversion. This is also Kafka stuff. And in summary, you read from the topic, okay, and then write, and, and you create the, the, the R line object. It's very, very typical stuff, just moving uh, pieces of, of, of data, okay? And to finish, the, the filter, okay? The filter is another structure of, of, of Kafka, and in fact, you, you only have one, uh, one method, give pass, which take, takes care of, of uh, looking at the content and decide pass or not pass, okay? Pass mean uh, go away, go to the, and publish to the topic, okay? In this case, I, I have put two examples here. This is very simple because I, I, I know that the, the, in, my, in my database, for this particular case, the key always start with airline. So I can use that for this example, okay? But commented, there is another approach, which is you can look into the JSON and look for a specific uh, attribute, okay? So, um, okay, let's, do, let's execute the, the demo. I'm going to stop the producers of the, of the previous. Um, I'm going also to flush the bucket. So I, I'm going to use the, the same bucket, but first step is to, de to, to delete, to flush. So only uh, you can do that by empty that bucket. Okay, now it's empty, okay? 
So um, next step is launching the the filter producer here. We are going to use a different topic. Let's move back to the to the JMX, okay, to the Kafka monitoring, and in a few seconds you will be you will see another topic, which is airline filter. And also you will see here. Let's take a look. Some small uh, peak in the in the load when when the the load comes in. Okay, airline filter populated, and I hope to see here. Uh, sorry, I have um, I have populated the the topic. I have to start the consumer, okay, to see the the data coming in. On, on the on the input side, you can see here the new topic airline filter with uh, 187 uh, data. Let's take a look what what is happening here. Uh, if you look, go to query and make a query like this. How many ad lines are in your database? Select count, the, uh, 187. So the, the filter has work. Okay? There are only, one, only the ad lines in the topic. So let's consume that. So what are we going to see now? We are going to read from the topic and write to Coachbase, okay? Let's see, the, still two minutes, I'm, I'm really out, quite out of time, I will need five more minutes. <laughs> Let's see if, if someone kick me, I, I will leave. So, still starting. Okay, here it is, the, the peak, okay? So let's look at, the, at what happened in detail. Okay, now we have the, the, the bucket full, okay? But take a look at the difference here. In the previous example, we have the base 64 encode uh, chunk of data, not very useful, and now have, we have the, the airline, the proper one. So we can make queries and that kind of things. Just three small files, not, not very large amount of code for this, okay? So this, uh, just to finish, I have 41 seconds or <laughs> still. Okay, can I spend like five more yeah. minutes? Okay. Uh, yeah, just to finish, the, the last part, the last demo is about, uh, it's about streaming uh, from, from Twitter, some, some tweets to Coachbase. In this case, without the Kafka Connect, but directly, with the um, Kafka producer and Kafka consumer. Don't worry, all the code is already available in, in my GitHub repo. I, I think we, we can publish the, 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 the presentation and, and the content, so you can take a look at the code. So um, let's take a, a quick look at the code and then um, just Okay, so how, how, look the, how the code looks like? Okay, you have basically a producer and a consumer. It's not very complex. Uh, I'm using, uh, there, there are many Twitter uh, APIs for Java, for other languages. This is also Java. And in fact, uh, I'm going to the, the, the important part. In the producer side, you are basically, you are uh, connecting to, to Kafka, sorry, to Twitter. Okay, we, I'm using some, some kind of, of uh, keywords. 
These one are from the, the trending topics from Portugal in, yeah, for, from yesterday. Okay? You will see the, the words in a minute. And then, you, with all the content from Kafka, you basically publish to, from, from Twitter, sorry, you publish to Kafka in this, this stuff. Okay? This producer send basically is taking the, the tweet and writing to Kafka. Okay? So this is the producer side, no code base at all. Let's look at the consumer. The consumer is, is not very complex also. You have to, take, to, to see wh where to, to connect, wh where is code base, which bucket to use, which user, and then uh, connect to, to Kafka, read the messages, and publish. Okay, so not very complex. Uh, let me show how it works for only for two minutes. Okay, so now we are going to see another topic, which will be Twitter. And uh, I have already so, some, some data in the, in the Twitter bucket, okay? But you, you, you will see how it, how it increases. Okay, let's look the operation per second. This is the... Okay, Twitter topic is beginning to take messages, okay? And uh, let's start the consumer also, finishing. Okay, so what I'm using is this, uh, there are several pages like this. You can see the trending topics for the for specific period. So this was for yesterday here in Portugal. Maybe you are, this is a typical stuff you're aware of. of. I, I'm not a... Most, I'm not aware of most of, most of this, but probably are relevant for you, okay? So uh, let's look at the, at the, at the code we site. Here you can see, you are seeing the, how the, the messages are coming in, okay? So more, more uh, tweets are coming. So just to finish, how can we, this is very, this is, this is very basic uh, stuff, not using the, the, the connector, just plain code, okay? What can you do with this data? You can do several things. You can do queries. Okay, like this. For example, this one. Okay, I have write some some con some modeling in the in the tweet. So, for example, uh, Teen Choice is it's kind of maybe a TV program. Are you aware of Teen Choice? There are a lot of tweets about that. In I think it's some kind of, of casting or. TV casting. So this is the standard nickel. The last thing I want to show you is the search capability. So uh, this is not Kafka, this is Coachbase. What you can do with, with Coachbase is same, same feature as, as Elasticsearch, as Solar, as Lucent. So you can define search indexes, okay? In this case, I have defined an index with uh, hashtags and text, okay? So nice thing is with code base you can, you can have the same data for JSON and search. For example, if we look for uh, nominee, okay, you can see all the all the indexed tests, for example, like this. And you can see the tweet. And nominee is here. So you, basically you are indexing text. So basically I have finished, just to summarize. Uh, we have talked about um, Kafka Connect, how you can interact Kafka with Coachbase. At the end, we have seen a small demo of, of Twitter, and uh, you have many sources of content to, to look from in deep or, or in detail of this. You have all the code for the demo, okay? And you have my contact here. Uh, you can contact me by mail or tweet. I promise to respond. No, no, I don't know when, but I, I will respond. And that's all. Sorry for the for the time and call it. Thank you. Okay. So we still have a little time for questions. Anyone? So only easy questions, please. <laughs> uh, uh, so my question is. Um, What's the message format you are using when saving that message into Kafka? 
Okay. Do you also do you use any type of serialization like Avro or something like that? Do you mean in the Twitter sample or, or every? Any any, any sample. Any. I'm talking about uh, Kafka Connect. Yeah. When you read from Couchbase and you write to Kafka, mm -hmm. uh, how does data live there? Okay, in the in the filter example, I'm using uh, this schema. So um, and this converter. So. In, in the, there is a property files in, in the connector. I, I will tell you by, by what. In, when you execute the connector, there is a property file configuring the, the Kafka side, and you put the, the, the coding class. So that, that property is in the, in the that, that value is in the, in the property file. Okay. In this case, let me check. It's, I think it's, um, it's not Abro. It's not Abro. It's, it's JSON. Take me some time. Okay, so here, no, it's not, it's not in this file, it's in the other one, <laughs> sorry. It's in this one. Okay, here you have JSON converter, okay? So this property, you can put Abro. I, I didn't talk about uh, Confluent. Confluent did the, the, all, the, all the stuff around connector. They have a very nice product on top of Kafka to monitor and to manage this in a visual way. We have very good relationship in coaches with them, but in this demo is plain Kafka. Question. So, any more questions? Fantastic question. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are using reactive Couchbase right now. Uh, can you tell me what is better? If it's Couchbase, na native Couchbase, or reactive Couchbase driver to connect to? To a reactive, coach base database. Reactive coach base. Wow. Um, reactive we are coach using base. that driver. Sorry? We are using that driver to connect to a coach base database. Yeah, I don't know if you ever. I'm, I'm not familiar with that, sorry. Uh, okay. Sorry, but uh, you can write me, if you have interest, send me an email and I'll, I'll try to. Okay, just uh, because you just um, talked about the coach base. Uh, we are yes, using yes, reactive right. coach base driver if you have any. Uh, but not uh, in this case, I, I'm not aware. Of that okay. component. Sorry, <laughs> we can discuss uh, after the conference. Any more questions? Okay, thanks. We're all set. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.